Dr. Anna Tanchi to the podium. What a treat, literally and metaphorically, pun intended. Uh, so I would like to start by thanking the uh, Department of Learning and Interpretation and by thanking uh, all of you uh, docents. As you know, uh, docents are among uh, my most passionate, um, knowledgeable and loyal uh, students. Uh, I was delighted uh, when uh, I heard that uh, uh, the topic of this docent symposium uh, combines uh, two of my favorite topics, art and food. What isn't it to like about each one of them, but also the combination of them? And so I uh, was equally delighted when I, I got the uh, list of the five uh, artworks that, that you picked up uh, for this um, year's uh, symposium. Um, and I thought, um, what would be a very meaningful way to uh, look at this topic through an art historical viewpoint, but also uh, sharing some tools, not, all, not, not only for today's uh, exploration, but also for future use, for future exploration of this um, uh, universal theme of food, of this intergenerational theme of food as well. Uh, and so my uh, idea for today was to literally offer you some of those uh, tools and and also look at this theme of food in art through the multi-layered meaning of it in history and also in art history. And I thought um, uh, I would start by sharing this fascinating book that literally gets us into the theme of food as a kind of intergenerational hook. So everybody responds to food one way or the other, and particularly the younger generation, the millennials, which is the very topic of uh, this book, very much respond to food. Uh, as you know, our 21st century is literally obsessed in a way with uh, both food but also with diets, all kinds of diets. And uh, uh, food uh, is indeed one of the few remaining material goods in our 21st century in the digital age where everything seems to be uh, up on a cloud, literally and metaphorically. Uh, food is definitely essential to our survival, to our well-being as a wonderful, wonderful indeed uh, element. And and uh, uh, so the author uh, of this book did a fabulous job in literally identifying uh, food as one of those few material goods in the digital uh, age, but also uh, food um, uh, as a multi-sensory element. It's also one of those uh, uh, elements, and of course for the millennials, which is a screen-obsessed generation, right? So uh, they uh, absolutely respond to uh, food, to the tangible of food, the taste of food, the smell of food, even though they photograph food for their Instagram uh, accounts. And that's something that's really one of the big, big <laughs> um, uh, sources of inspiration for uh, that um, uh, digital uh, age. What is also fascinating to remember uh, is, uh, is to ask ourselves a, our question, the question, why are we so obsessed in our 21st century with food? And indeed, the food gives the millennials, gives also the rest of us uh, a kind of uh, um, uh, feel of uh, it makes us feel powerful instead of powerless and that's exactly what the author uh, explores in her book as a kind of element of control uh, to know where our food comes from is something that uh, uh, the millennials are very much fascinated with and of course it's an age uh, where um, uh, organic uh, fare, where celebrity chefs, where microbrews uh, can indeed make or break the future of food. And so she went on and f um, interviewed a lot of important uh, players in the food industry, including Anthony Bourdin. Anthony Bourdin, who unfortunately uh, committed suicide, but uh, Anthony Bourdin uh, really commented a lot. He was a wonderful storyteller, as you know, and so he commented on food and risk. Great quote by Anthony Bourdin, uh, good food and good eating are about uh, 
risk. And I would dare to add art is also about good art, great art, powerful art is also about risk. Risk taking for the artist himself or herself, but also for the viewer, for the spectator. And in some cases, indeed, it is about uh, risk taking. It is about getting outside of our comfort zone, right? To uh, try uh, foods that we are not familiar with, but also to engage with art that we are not 100% um, uh, uh, familiar with. So that's definitely uh, something uh, to keep in mind. So uh, getting outside of our comfort zone is definitely something that uh, uh, food and art um, have um, in common. While I was um, also researching and uh, pre uh, preparing for the presentation today, I came across a book um, uh, that I had discovered during my years at Harvard University. It's a fascinating book. It's titled, Why a Painting is Like a Pizza, a Guide to Understanding and Enjoying Modern Art. Um, uh, it still remains very relevant in, uh, uh, in today's uh, uh, art world. And indeed, if you think about it, and the author does a beautiful job, uh, it's, it's one of those um, uh, books that are extremely easy to read. They are uh, really full of flavor, literally and metaphorically. And um, uh, so if you think about it, paintings and pizzas both depend on visual uh, balance uh, for their appeal. Uh, they can be judged by by uh, established standards, but must be evaluated in terms of individual taste. And it's also about making aesthetic decisions, both in art and in daily life, as well as bending and in sometimes and sometimes breaking the rules. So, of course, in order to uh, break the rules successfully, you still uh, need uh, to know them. And uh, this brings me to the very heart of both history and art history. So in history and in art history, we need to know the what and the when, but in order to better understand the why and the how. And of course, for today's uh, topic, the what is indeed food and feasting, and uh, uh, particularly the multi-layered uh, meaning of food and feasting in art and in art history. Um, when I teach uh, history and art history, I always tell my students that learning art history is like learning a new visual language. In other words, you go from seeing to saying, from visual to verbal. And so it's very important to have some tools in hand. I look at that as keys to open doors, open doors of engagement, of um, uh, function of meaning, uh, and ultimately uh, in uh, uh, opening those doors to find, of course, a multitude of other doors behind those first doors that you open uh, using those keys. And I very much love to uh, apply VTS, Visual Thinking Strategies, uh, uh, it's, of course, this wonderful book uh, published by uh, Philip Yenowine, who was an educator at the MoMA in New York for several years. And so uh, you can apply that virtually in front of any artwork uh, by asking first and then trying to answer those very open-ended questions. First, what's going on in this artwork? Second, what do you see that makes you say that? Third question, what more can we uh, find? And the idea is, of course, to increase ultimately the viewer's critical thinking, language, and literacy uh, skills. To that, um, I have added my very own uh, visual analysis equation uh, that I encourage my students to apply virtually in front of any artwork. And you can indeed apply that to uh, all of our artworks for today's uh, food uh, theme. Subject matter plus style plus context, plus function, give us uh, meaning. And of course, uh, the subject matter for today is food and feasting. Uh, generally speaking, you can answer that question by uh, asking uh, who or what is uh, depicted. Then you go on and you describe style, the formal elements of art, line, color, forms, texture, uh, and the principles of design, symmetry, balance, uh, asymmetry, etc. Then you uh, do a little bit of homework to understand the context. It can be the cultural context, the political context, the socioeconomic context. And then you ask yourself the question about the function. Why was this artwork created? 
Uh, and ultimately, once you have analyzed, you pick up your favorite words, keywords, and you put them together to um, come up with, to synthesize, to come up with a couple of sentences, to come up with meaning, ideally, multi-layered meaning. And that was exactly uh, my uh, point for this presentation today, to uh, use those five artworks that you chose as a starting point to ultimately uh, think about um, the multi-layered value of uh, food. And I came up with some fascinating uh, uh, results in this um, uh, fabulous um, uh, journey. So all of those five artworks have a similar subject matter related to food and feasting, but different style, different context, different function, and ultimately different meaning. And uh, the more you compare and contrast them, and of course we use a lot of juxtapositions and comparisons in art history, right? We try to find first similarities between two artworks and then differences, and you can do this exercise virtually uh, between all uh, five artworks, so take two of them each time and then compare and contrast them uh, to add another layer of meaning. And so I uh, really wanted to offer you some uh, tools, some keys to open doors. It comes to the multi-layered value of food, of course, very practical food to get us started, food as survival in its production, its preservation, preparation, presentation, ultimately uh, consumption. Uh, of course, uh, uh, also important for uh, good health, the nu nutritional value, uh, the sustainability. Uh, its financial value, so food as a commodity related to trade, and commerce, great examples uh, today. It's multi-sensory value, so it en engages different senses, including not only sight, but also smell, taste, touch. It's emotional value, and that's something uh, that uh, uh, is really universal. Uh, so it can provide enjoyment, comfort, it can bring back childhood memories. You know, the very famous um, Marcel Proust uh, episode of the Madeleine, where uh, tasting that Madeleine brings up uh, those um, uh, multisensory uh, memories. The cultural value is very important too, so related to memory, identity, values, beliefs, the social value, uh, element of kinship, community, symbol or power, prestige, conviviality, uh, sharing, the symbolic or spiritual value, uh, great example also today uh, with the Eucharist, bread and wine, breaking bread, daily bread, uh, and of course ultimately the aesthetic value, so associated with pleasure, with elegance, with beauty, uh, and ultimately food becoming even an art material that was the case already centuries before us with edible art, but also very much the case in uh, contemporary art. And uh, I thought I would start with the dawn of uh, art to very, uh, some very early examples uh, from art history uh, that um, can be traced back uh, first to, to uh, humankind being um, hunters and gatherers, right, in a uh, cave painting in uh, particular. And then, of course, this transition from uh, hunting and gathering towards agriculture. So settling down, producing food, and then uh, ultimately creating surplus, right, that will allow for labor specialization and that will allow particularly for uh, artists um, uh, to uh, exist um, uh, independently of having to, uh, to make a living, right, to earn their daily bread. Uh, so uh, it's, um, uh, I'll, I'll share a couple of examples here, the iconic example, of course, from the Grotte Lascaux, the cave of Lascaux uh, in France, the uh, Hall of Bulls, a uh, wonderful example uh, there where you have uh, our ancestors literally going from recognition of forms of uh, animals towards representation, uh, food as uh, survival, the food supply, and also uh, as a great way of uh, painting animals either as colored silhouettes or created by outline alone, which are the two basic approaches to uh, painting in the entire history of uh, art. Uh, a couple of good terms also to remember in art history, composite view or twisted perspective, right? The combination of uh, uh, face uh, value and profile so as to communicate the maximum uh, information. 
And uh, another uh, great example, which is the earliest example of a narrative uh, art. It could be a myth, a narrative about the death of a hero. I might show an actual event that took place. And ultimately, it contains what I love to call the three L's of uh, both a successful narrative storytelling, but also of powerful art. It's about life, love, and loss. Uh, another great example coming from this transition from the hunters gatherers towards uh, uh, um, uh, agriculture, right? So wonderful example of Mesopotamian art highlighting agriculture, highlighting the food chain and the creation of surplus, the wonderful, amazing uh, Warka vase. Well, you have the two rivers, right? Uh, Tiger and Euphrates, the very base of that vase. And of course, water is vital, vital for irrigation, for survival uh, and it um, uh, leads to the creation of agriculture of crops right crops that of course the animals will eat um, and ultimately you will have a surplus right surplus that um, uh, those human figures in a kind of procession are bringing up uh, right here uh, to uh, goddess Inanna so there is this entire um, exchange of uh, goods in a way offerings right uh, in this kind of do ut this I give you so that you can give me back, uh, so that you uh, can be very hopeful uh, that good things will happen to you, and you can also um, eliminate the fear that um, uh, bad uh, things would not happen uh, to you. And then I couldn't resist to add uh, this wonderful, wonderful manuscript from the Casa Buonarroti, right? Words and images of food. It is this um, uh, illustrated grocery list uh, um, from the hand of Michelangelo himself. So it includes um, some fascinating requests. And you'll notice that in each uh, case, um, he has written down the words, right? But he has also done those uh, uh, really extremely poignant drawings, right? Probably because the person who was doing the grocery shopping for him did not necessarily know how to uh, read, but uh, a really great um, uh, example. Now, let's uh, come to our five uh, artworks for uh, today. And you'll notice that uh, each one of them indeed contributes to uh, a layer of meaning when it comes to both food and um, uh, the theme of uh, feasting. So all the way from uh, Giacomo Leggi, uh, so food um, uh, in an everyday life market scene as the artist's ability to create an illusion of reality. Um, Jacob Bodendick's uh, food as a signal of uh, status. Sebastiano Ricci and the symbolic and spiritual value of food. Frederick Remington and the cultural value of food as a combination of realism and romance of facts and fiction coming together in this, this kind of dreamscape. And of course, of course, uh, Soutine's emotional and universal value food in between life and uh, death. So let's start with our first uh, artwork, um, and I, I uh, picked up a chron chronological uh, exploration for uh, today. Uh, food in an everyday life market scene as the artist's ability to create an illusion of reality. And earlier today, we analyzed all of those different elements, um, uh, the uh, fruit and the flowers. Of course, you're all very familiar with those uh, vanitas scenes, right? So the reminders of mortality, uh, very much into the uh, Dutch tradition. And of course, Giacomo Leggi, Leggi himself being from Liège, that's the very origin of his uh, family uh, name, was Flemish. And uh, indeed, there is this uh, long uh, tradition there that he uh, revisits. So uh, the variety of food in this everyday life market scene, the artist's ability uh, to uh, literally imitate life, right? That's the uh, um, uh, Greek, um, ancient Greek um, ideal of the mimesis, right, the imitation of uh, life. And indeed, uh, that uh, uh, Melon, as we discussed, uh, is uh, uh, so lifelike that he depicted the fly uh, on uh, it. Um, so this um, illusion of reality uh, is uh, uh, key there. Lots to be said about um, an inverted still life, lots to be said about um, uh, 
um, the uh, chiaroscuro, very good uh, art historical term, right? The uh, contrast between light and uh, shadow. And uh, also uh, something to be said also uh, about Baroque, the Baroque tradition, right? So uh, if there is one adjective to get into the very heart of Baroque, it is without any doubt dramatic, right? Drama, uh, motion and emotion happening in front of our eyes. And a good question as well to uh, ask ourselves in front of virtually uh, all of those um, uh, artworks is um, uh, the viewer's interaction with uh, the piece. Uh, here are very specific choices that the artist made so that the viewer himself or herself becomes an almost like an active participant in uh, the scene. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, elements to be uh, analyzed towards that um, uh, direction. Uh, second example and second uh, layer of meaning when to food and feasting, food as a signal of status. And of course, we talked about spices, right? We talked about the ginger. Uh, wonderful example, of course, uh, uh, here by an artist um, who was born in Germany, uh, knew very well the French uh, tradition and was ultimately active uh, in uh, England. Uh, so uh, this um, uh, ent entire uh, storage receptacle for uh, spices that uh, loses its functionality and becomes more of a status symbol. Uh, and, um, uh, of course, ultimately uh, made for display. So there is something to be said also about the spectacle, right? So uh, this kind of like focal point um, uh, in a, a grand room uh, where the silversmith enlarged the proportions and added European style floral designs and uh, uh, masks um, uh, and uh, uh, ultimately, of course, um, uh, this um, uh, entire uh, fascination uh, for uh, spices, for decorative elements, for the technique of the repoussé technique, and uh, there is a lot to be said uh, there as well. Now, uh, our uh, third artwork is all about the symbolic spiritual value of food. Uh, so, of course, a uh, key moment here uh, in uh, the Christian tradition, uh, Christ's blessing of the bread and wine, the Eucharist. Um, here, late Baroque uh, school, uh, where uh, you have um, uh, um, uh, really uh, some elements that belong to the classical depiction of uh, uh, this um, uh, subject matter with a twist. Uh, so you have um, uh, a lot of uh, extraneous uh, uh, depictions that we uh, discussed earlier today. Uh, and uh, uh, in particular, uh, there is uh, this uh, fascination for the dog, right? The dog uh, licking uh, that uh, plate. Uh, and I did some research um, uh, in order to understand why uh, Sebastiano Ricci was so fascinated with that dog that he included it in the two versions of the same uh, subject matter. So I found out that the dog, usually a symbol of fidelity, becomes here a symbol of uh, greed. Uh, so there are some uh, uh, references uh, uh, to that moment of betrayal. And of course, uh, Judas himself, as I read, um, usually is depicted using, uh, wearing a yellow uh, garment uh, uh, because of the association with gold, because of the association with greed as well. So there's definitely uh, something uh, fascinating uh, there. But what is really uh, key is um, uh, the uh, spiritual and the symbolic um, uh, value of uh, food. And here comes the cultural value of food as a combination of realism and romance, so facts and fiction coming together as a kind of almost uh, uh, what is known in art history, a dreamscape of uh, sorts. Uh, and uh, uh, here, Frederick Remington uh, literally uh, getting into the very heart of that cultural value of uh, uh, food, uh, so uh, combining realism and romance, depicting the American West, the American cowboy as a natural folk hero, fascinated with the, the, the Civil War, um, and uh, uh, paying close attention to uh, detail, depicting the men, the, their clothing, their riding equipment, using natural and strong colors, a relatively uh, limited color palette, and the more you study color theory in particular, uh, the more you realize that artists um, uh, use a lot of those so-called 
complementary colors or the ones that are on opposite sides of the color wheel. This is basic color theory, so when you place red and green next to uh, each other, you have stronger results. When you place uh, blue and orange next to each other, you also have stronger results. When you place um, yellow and violet next to each other, you also have uh, stronger results. Um, uh, so fascinating use um, uh, of um, uh, art history uh, uh, and of color theory uh, there. And of course, some uh, wonderful uh, exploration of uh, how this would translate uh, uh, in uh, prints um, that we discussed um, uh, earlier uh, today. And then, of course, you have the, the emotional and universal value of food uh, in between life and uh, death uh, with this uh, still life, uh, with uh, poultry, with uh, this obsession with life and death around uh, mortality, uh, the life's um, uh, struggles, um, the horrors of war, uh, victimization, if you see it from uh, uh, the artist's um, uh, viewpoint. Um, uh, there is a lot um, uh, indeed to uh, explore uh, there. Expressionism is indeed uh, uh, key. Uh, so expression of what? Expression of strong emotions, Soutine being um, uh, famous, or I should say infamous, uh, for bringing carcasses of beef and uh, uh, chicken in his uh, uh, workshop in order to explore this in betweenness, in between life and loss, in between life and uh, death. Uh, so, uh, a, an extremely rich uh, topic, a fascinating topic. Uh, the more uh, we continue to think about uh, that, the more um, relationships we will find can always continue uh, to um, uh, compare and contrast um, uh, the, the five uh, works from today's exploration. And we can also identify a lot more uh, artworks that indeed um, uh, depict food or are around the food, the theme of food and feasting, always a great hook, intergenerational hook for all uh, kinds of audiences. Wonderful universal uh, theme, everyday life, um, illusion of reality, signal of status, symbolic and spiritual value, cultural value, uh, as a combination of realism and romance, and also the emotional and universal value of uh, food. So, uh, thank you very much. Let's keep enjoying food and art, and uh, bon appétit. Thank you, thank you.